Now this smoking addiction, this problem that's inside me, I knew without a doubt, as soon as I could understand that problem, I would have the answer to everything. And um, it was really, really a profound conversation that I have with this smoking addiction. And years, a few years ago, um, while I'm experiencing pure hell, I had this smoking addiction that, you know, finances were my biggest problem and yet I'm smoking. And, you know, the logic of seeing that much money go out the door when it could be going towards, you know, the survival. And I had kids and even everybody that I was around, my support group, my kids, everybody knew and understood the smoking addiction. They, they knew not to pressure me to quit smoking. And what was happening is, as soon as I try to stop smoking, I couldn't think. I, it was My thoughts were addictive on, I gotta have a cigarette, gotta have a cigarette, gotta have a cigarette. Like, it, it was like an obsession. And I couldn't function, I couldn't work. And trying to even work at getting into programming you can't think on the job if every single thought you have is gotta have a cigarette gotta have a cigarette you know like your whole it, it that problem wrapped around me so freaking tight that I couldn't even breathe I couldn't do anything unless I had a cigarette and then as soon as I had a cigarette was able to calm down was able to function was able to do whatever it is I needed to do it brought I was able to go to work and earn a living and provide the food the limited things that we did have if I smoked it was almost like a driving force to keep me doing what was needed to survive if I stopped smoking then I basically would crash and couldn't work and then that meant the rent wasn't gonna get paid and like it's really truly insane and so I knew that if I could get a grip over the smoking thing, then, you know, my life would definitely improve. So even when I had no money, I, you know, I took the chance and spent some money on getting hypnotized and I uh, thought, well, if I could just hypnotize this problem from going away. And this was just before I was crashing. It was when I was finding out how corrupt the justice system really is it was at a time where the police actually did a lot of things against me while I'm trying to ask for help they were actually protecting my abuser they were they were doing everything this abuser wanted to do to do harm to me and to my children and you know went to hospitals to look for help and they didn't want to help like the story of what doctors are doing is like they want to make you even more sick so it was like trying to find help was next to impossible so anyways I go and pay to get uh, hypnotized and this this guy that's hypnotizing me who is apparently really really successful told me you want to smoke I can't get you to quit until you want to smoke I want to quit smoking and it's like, don't tell me I don't want to smoke. I, that's the biggest thing. I, I'm the one that would drive you friggin' crazy because I'm quitting every friggin' day. Every day, it's like, this is my last smoke. I'm never gonna smoke again. And, you know, tomorrow I'm gonna quit. I mean, I drive people crazy, constantly saying I'm gonna quit and wanna quit. I passionately do not want to smoke and yet I'm still smoking. And it, I'm sure it drives everybody crazy because they see me saying this and not following through. And I see myself saying it all the time and very disappointed every time I fail. So it was a lot of insanity. And it, I, when this guy wants to say that I want to smoke, it's like, why would I pay money to try and quit if I want to smoke? It made no sense to me at all. And after I used this process, it was like, holy shit, were you right? And then using this process to take that problem outside of myself and have this communication with it, 
I ended up finding out that this conversation I had with the smoking addiction is everything that's negative. It's everything that's evil. It can see be seen in everybody else's experience exactly the same way. Um, this, these elites, this is the same thing that they are doing. Um, every time you see or experience any type of problem, any negative experience, this is the same thing going on all the time. It's the same pattern. So it might give you a little insight into my experience with it. So I end up having this conversation with the smoking addiction. It's like, what is it you want? Because the deal is to give it what it wants. And it says it wants to kill me. And it's like, well, why do you want to kill me? And it's and it said, because I want you to be in peace. It's like all of this hell you'll, you're going through, all of the lack of love, that you're not getting will be over if you're dead. You'll experience peace as soon as you're dead because this world experience is so much of a lack of love being given to you. And it's like, oh my God, that's why these elite people want us all dead. That's why they think they're doing something good because they want everybody to be experiencing peace. And this is their only logical way of, of getting humanity to experience peace is through death and frankly that's not what I want you know my my goal is to live and um, even in the Bible you know the positive aspect of of our experience they live past 900 years and there is even this thing that says eternal life it's like the goal is to live and get that eternal life through living and living healthy you know, but even religion, the negative aspect of religion is like you can only get eternal life through death. So that's where I kind of seen a lot of illogical things going on with the Bible because um, apparently the Bible wants you to die too. That death is a natural thing and, and you know, so these elites are seeing that death is how you're going to find peace and you know, even Jesus didn't die. He proved that no matter what it is you can do, you can't kill me as long as I live right. I will ascend. Like whatever happened to Jesus, you know, he wasn't killed. What happened to him? And the same thing can happen to us, apparently. So anyways, I'm having this conversation with my smoking addiction. It tells me that it wants me dead because I'll get peace. So every problem um, we think we need to um, compromise, but the idea of problem solving is where everybody gets the win. You know, so the addiction gets to win and I get to win. In every war, if we had a peace table, both sides of war would actually experience their version of peace without any um, um, compromise. Nobody's compromising. Everybody's getting everything they want. Even these elites will get everything they want, and so will everybody else that's suffering from all of these experiences. So we just have to kind of know how to have that peace table, how to have that conversation. So I'm having like this peace table conversation with this smoking addiction and, and just trying to um, have that conversation with it. So, you know, I'm saying, well, if you can find peace through the living experience, would you want that? And it's like, yeah. So then we started opening, we, the smoking addiction and I, started working towards, well, how is that possible? And um, that's where I started learning more uh, about how to even calm down even more. That's where um, when I see a lack of love being thrown at me, I know it's the same thing as the smoking addiction. It's not something being done intentionally to me. It's being done because they just don't know any better. And all sides of every argument we have, we do want something better. We just don't know how to get there. Um, I'll continue in another tape.